As a JavaScript developer who's moved into the Laravel ecosystem pretty recently, the ease of deployment has always caught me off guard from moving from JavaScript into a full stack framework like Laravel. All of a sudden, instead of just pointing a GitHub repo to something like Vercel or Netlify or GitHub pages and be ready to go with my application, just like it was in development, or for the most part, like it was in development, and all of a sudden it's just live. I can connect a, a domain, I can get things up and running, and it just works the way I would expect it to work because that's how I built it on my machine. But with a full stack framework like Rails or Laravel or Django or Elixir Phoenix, there's a lot more that you have to negotiate, have to set up, have to maintain when it comes to servers, because you have things like long running queues and background jobs. And how is the server actually going to talk to the front end? And how do those two parts of the server connect and intermingle? So what tools do we have as a Laravel developer to just make things easier for deploying to the cloud, getting your local development application up and running online, for everyone to see. So in this video, I put together all of the options and there's probably a few that I'm missing that you have to deploy a Laravel application today and which ones are easier than others. So this is the Laravel tier list for ease of deployment. Now I will say that I'm not sponsored by any of the products that I'm going to be talking about today. I do have ones that I prefer and that I actually use in some of my applications. But I wanted to take this from a standpoint of as someone who grew up in the JavaScript ecosystem, how easy it is it to get something like the Laravel bootcamp up and running online. So the way I thought about this is Laravel has a, a bootcamp that they've put together that you can choose your front end, play live wire JavaScript, and you can just walk through building an application from start to finish. And I actually have a three plus hour long video of where I did something similar to this, but building a note sharing app from start to finish from nothing to deployment. And you can see which uh, service I used to deploy it there. But if we were to deploy something like this, what is the best option and what's the easiest option for all the things that you're building out with this? If you take a look, you have things like notifications, which are our email notifications, and then you have events that you have to handle. So those are things that we're going to have to be thinking through as we take a look at what makes it easy to deploy an application like this online. So let's take a look. So if you don't recognize some of these logos, that's okay. I'll walk through wh what they are and then just a brief overview of them. So we have Volter, we have Fly.io, we have Railway, we have Heroku, we have Ploy.io, we have Render, Linode, Hetzner, DigitalOcean, AWS, Laravel Vapor, and Laravel Forge, and then Light control. Again, this is not a comprehensive list. This is just why I've picked out from either things that I've used or things that have been recommended to me and to others. And again, to reiterate, this is all my opinion of what me as a JavaScript developer turned into a Laravel developer prefers when it comes to ease of deployment. I have not used Docker extensively. I don't really know uh, what server permissions are and how to SSH into a server. I don't know that. I just want something that's simple to be, okay, I built my application. It's running in my local environment. Now, how do I just deploy that online and have to do as little work as possible, as little documentation reading as possible to make it work like I expected it to work? So I want to start off with the Laravel ecosystem offerings first. So that would be Laravel Vapor and Laravel Forge. And these are ones that are paid offerings by both by the Laravel team. And I would say that they put out great work. And so as a premise, if you don't have a dog in the fight and you are looking to just get your application up and running as quickly as possible and support the Laravel team in the process, then Forge and Vapor are going to be great options. One, you get to support them and two, it's like first party access to hosting a Laravel application because they're built by the Laravel team. Forge makes it easy to host on Volter, Linode, Hetzner, AWS, and DigitalOcean, while Vapor makes it easy to host on AWS. So this is just like a, 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 an, a wrapper around those services. So first off, Laravel Vapor, host on AWS. I'm going to say S tier because it makes everything easy. Now it is a pricey application 
if you take a look at Laravel Vapor here, the it's going to be starting off with $39 a month or $399 a year. That's USD. And there is a free option to get up and running and see if Laravel Vapor works great for you. Now, one of the things that I really appreciate about Vapor is most of my projects are hosted on this, but they have everything out of the box. So if I was to take a look at the documentation and I was to say, hey, I want to run a specific queue or store specific files on my application, it just comes with it out of the box. I don't have to worry about how do I connect to Amazon S3? How do I even get emails up and running? Because it does it for you. As long as you're connected and then have this Vapor YAML file that has all of the configuration settings ready to go, it just works. And the great thing about AWS is, okay, everyone knows that it's the best deployment service system out there right now, especially for service, especially for the cloud. Vapor just handles all that for you. So I would say if you're building an application and you don't know if it's going to be a big thing, or maybe you do know it's going to be a big thing, and you're building this for a company and you have the money to spend on Laravel Vapor, do it. Or if you have one project like that and you want to experiment with a bunch of different projects, buy Laravel Vapor for the one project and use it for everything else. Especially if you have Amazon AWS credits just piling up. So I would say S tier. It works fantastic and it works great. Laravel Forge. This is what you can use to manage your Volter, your Linode, Hetzner, DigitalOcean, AWS services, but it is not serverless in the sense that you're going to have downtime unless you have the Envoyer zero downtime deployment um, offering by Laravel as well. Uh, but it just makes managing servers on those services a lot easier. I'm going to put in A tier mostly because I think it, it works great for what it is. Actually, I'm going to put it on B tier mostly because I think that there is still a lot of setup that has to happen it's this is an ease of deployment tier list and this just means that if i'm putting it on b tier there's still a lot of setup i have to have accounts on linode or hetzner or DigitalOcean or aws and then i have to use forge on top of those accounts to just manage it and it, forge makes all of these easier i'm not going to put these above forge or even on the same tier as forge because forge makes it easier but as someone who is used to, hey, I have this GitHub repo, I'm connecting my Vercel account to that GitHub repo, and it just works. Forge is still a little bit more, there, there's still more that has to happen, especially if you want to set up all the different pieces and set up things like domain in your account. Forge makes it easier than just managing all these separately, I would say. But there's still a lot of work on top of that. Forge is also you would there's a paid subscription for forge and they do have a generous trial but again if you are wanting to support the Laravel team you cannot go wrong with either of these options okay i'm going to put all these together volter linode hetzner digital ocean i think that they all have the same offerings and if you have a preference or have already worked with them before then go with those particular offerings but i'm going to put them all in c tier and this is because I think that some of them have great options. I would say DigitalOcean and probably Volter have better options of saying, hey, there's one-click deployment. But it's still so much that you have to do. There's a reason why Forge was built, to help manage all of these. And so I would say that unless you, your, your company or you yourself maybe have credits or just a personal connection with any of these services, then there's no reason to use them individually. If you have those credits and you want to use them and you have the money, use Forge and help manage them. But for ease of deployment, I would say that there's better options. Okay, let's go ahead and look at AWS. And I don't think anyone would be surprising if I put it here in D tier because it's just like some of these, except that it's so much more complicated if you're trying to get up the ground, uh, off the ground and running. Now, I don't think anyone would be surprised if I put this in D tier because AWS is similar to all these offerings, DigitalOcean, Volter, Linode, Hetzner, but it also just makes things so much more complicated. There's no easy way to deploy a Laravel application just using AWS. Now there is something called bref.sh. And if you wanted to, use, to deploy on AWS, but you didn't have the money to use Laravel Vapor, 
then Breath is going to be a perfect option. Basically, Breath gives you the option of handling all that deployment. So it's going to spin up the services that you need without having to do it all yourself. You just say, okay, hey, here's my deployment file. And if I want queues, I just install this plugin and then I set it up within this serverless.yaml file. So it gives you all of the functionality that a Vapor would, but without the, the uh, automated management that Vapor provides. So if you are wanting to host on AWS, don't just do it strictly through AWS. Use something like Bref.sh, but for ease of deployment, it's still going to be D tier, maybe C tier with Bref.sh. Okay, now what about things like Ploy.io? And if you haven't heard about this, it's basically like a version of Render. Sorry, version of Forge. Ploy.io is a, a, a third-party alternative to Forge. It manages your DigitalOcean, Volter, uh, Linode, and Hetzner servers. And I think it's a little bit cheaper and a little bit more skewed towards the European development side of things as well. So if I was not in the US, if I was in Europe, I would choose Ploy with a Hetzner server. That would be the best bang for the buck to get up and running quickly. But it's still B tier. I think there's still ways of deploying easier. If you're coming from the JavaScript ecosystem, if you've never managed a Docker and you don't really know what a server is or at least how to manage a server properly then there's other options but ploy makes it a lot easier um, so i would say ploy and forge are really neck and it just decides what's your personal preference there are going to be some fantastic like free trials for both of those i think ploy actually has its own free offering where you can have one managed server without having to start paying Okay, Heroku, Railway, Render, and Flight Control. These are all really similar in my mind, but I think there's some key differences that you have to think about. Render is an offering to basically be able to, and they have a, a real neat updated website right here, but it's basically being able to deploy and scale your apps without having to worry about it. They have offerings for both Postgres, for managed Redis, for zero time down deployments, all of all of cron jobs, background workers, all of this stuff is packaged up for you. You just choose which one would you like to use. Now, here's my personal preference. I don't think render is greatly suited for Laravel, mostly because I don't think that's their primary focus. I think their primary focus is probably something like Rails, mostly because I think render and their documentation is geared towards Rails and maybe some other back end full stack frameworks. Mostly I, I get that by their example is Laravel 5.8 web app, which is a little bit ways away from where we are with Laravel 10 right now. That being said, I still think that render still has a great option and it makes it easier to deploy. So I would say A tier, and we might put this at the bottom of A tier, but we'll get there when we get there. Next is Heroku. I'm gonna put this in A tier as well. Heroku is similar to render but it seems like they have abandoned their customer service aspect. A lot of people have moved off of them since of a big pricing change. You can't get started for free on Heroku anymore, like you can with Render, at least to my knowledge. So I would say put it at the bottom of, bottom of A tier, but there's still some great offerings within that. So if you have used Heroku for, before, maybe with a React app, and you already know like how it works and getting it set up and managing the proc files, all that, then it's going to be a great option for you. But I think some of these are going to be better. So Railway, I'm going to put this above Render. And I think the reason why is Railway makes it incredibly easy to just get an, an attached specific instances. I, I think I like the UI a little bit better than Render. And then it just has a lot of different options if you would like to scale those applications. Now, the downside of this, as especially compared to Render, is it's going to cost $5 a month as a minimum. There is no free tier. They do have a generous free trial, but everything is going to come down to that $5 a month pricing. So I think Railway and Render Try it out. Do the free tier on Railway. Do the free package on Render. Deploy your app and see which one do you prefer. 
because there's all it's always going to be personal preference as to what makes the most sense for you and as you're trying to find things like how do i attach a database how do i set up cert, uh, queues or anything like that it's going to be personal preference as you can see these are my personal preferences Next is flight control. This is actually a new offering. I'm going to put it in the A tier as well. In the middle of railway and render. And the only reason I don't put it higher is I actually didn't get this working the way I would like to within my Laravel application. So I think flight control promises a lot of awesome things. And I didn't spend as much time as I would like being able to try to figure this out. But in the 30, 45 minutes I spent, I wasn't able to get it fully up and running like I wanted to. But the premise is it's similar to Laravel Vapor in the sense that you are being able to host on AWS with just being able to point to a GitHub application. And they do have some docs specifically for Laravel. But again, I wasn't able to get this up and running. So I didn't want, and I don't want to be too harsh on them, but there, there was some parts that probably was user error that I wasn't able to figure out. And it was mostly that the server couldn't connect or couldn't talk to the front end that was hosted on their services. So I think I needed to change the port that was being hosted. So again, I think it's a fantastic option and they have some great things going along on the roadmap. And if you're still looking to host on AWS, but maybe you don't, um, maybe you don't have the money to spring for Laravel Vapor, then flight control is going to be a fantastic option. And because I saved it for last, you might be thinking, okay, is this going to be D tier, S tier? It's going to be S tier for me. And more importantly, it's going to be S plus tier. I probably wouldn't put it above Laravel Vapor 90% of the time. Fly.io. And again, I'm not sponsored by fly.io. I do not get paid by them. This is not me shilling fly.io. This is just me simply saying that I love fly.io as a service. I love what it provides. And if you could already tell from my um, three and a half hour long video of getting a production Laravel app up and running from zero to production, I chose fly.io to do that. The reason why I'm putting in S tier is a few things. One, I think has fantastic developer experience, has fantastic UI, and I think that they really care about their customer as a product. Two, they have a fantastic free tier. Um, you could see here that because one of my applications went a little viral with my zero to production ready Laravel video, it's costing me a little bit more than it has in previous months. Previous months was about like a dollar or a dollar and a half for some of the applications that I'm running. But they also, I believe, give $5 of credit for free. So I don't think I'll pay this even. I could be wrong on that. It might be just be a couple of dollars that you get for free. But there, you do have to enter a credit card when you set up an account. But you get, yeah, $5 a month of usage included. So I'm not paying for $5 a month, but I get that included with my account, which is incredible. And I definitely would pay this in a heartbeat if any of my apps kicked off that I'm using on fly.io. The thing that I love about fly.io is how easy it is to seriously get up and running. If I was, and you see this in my video from zero to production within Laravel, is after you create an app, let's say we had this bootcamp app, after we created it and we have our local development all up and running and ready to go, all you would do is install the fly.io CLI. Once that's installed, once you're logged in, once you're ready to go, you just say fly launch. It detects that it's a Laravel app. It makes all the changes for you of how you're setting up your Laravel application. If you're using a Node.js and everything like that, you just input a app URL in the environment file for this fly.toml file that it provides. And then you click or you run fly deploy, and then it's good to go. Seriously, take a look. Seriously, take a look at the video that I made from zero to production. There's a small segment of deploying to fly.io and it, it took, I think maybe 10 minutes to get up and running and it's ready to go. And the great part is if you needed to add cron or queues, you just add this to the fly.toml file and all of a sudden it's ready to go. It's up and running. They also have a fantastic, they also have an easy way of setting up things like certificates. So if I wanted to do a custom domain, 
They also provide monitoring out of the box. So you not only do you get all this monitoring of the server application as well, but you could have you could have easy access to Prometheus or set up Grafana or Sentry built right in to fly.io as well. So it automatically connects to your application without you having to run anything yourself. So there's a bunch of great options for getting a Laravel application up and running from zero to production of saying, hey, I have this application on my local environment. How am I going to put it into the cloud online for everyone to see? And there's a bunch of different options for that. And they depend on your personal preferences, what you're looking to get out of the app. If you just want to host on a server and not have to touch serverless, or if you're like me and you just want something as easy as give me a command to just push this online and give me a URL back. And so I think fly.io gives the best option for that, but some of the other options are going to be fantastic for you, for your personal preferences and for your application in general. Overall, test things, try things out, check out the free tiers and just build, deploy, publish, publish until you figure out, hey, this is what works best for me.